Are you about to introduce fish habitat into your pond? Is it truly achieving what you think it is? Stick around to find out. Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith, fish management specialist here at Aquatic Control. And today we're gonna to talk about two different types of habitat in your pond, simple or complex. First up, we're gonna talk about simple habitat. This is gonna be great for attracting fish to a specific area. It's gonna attract adult bluegill, largemouth bass, crappie, any of your common game species. They're gonna to like to hang around this at different times, different times of the year but this is really gonna allow anglers to increase their catch rate while they're fishing. And this habitat may change the way that you fish your pond, but it's rarely gonna change the trajectory of your fishery. Now we're gonna talk about complex habitat. This is gonna be great for protecting the young of year or small fish in the pond. This can actually help change the trajectory of your fishery. By increasing complex habitat, you can allow more bluegill to avoid being eaten as they grow into larger sizes. And this is gonna be extremely important in a bass crowded scenario as we're trying to rebound your forage base. Complex habitat can still attract adult fish and can still be a great place to fish around. So we have a few examples back here today that we're gonna look at. We're gonna walk through and show you the difference between simple and complex habitat. Again, we're gonna start with the simple habitat. First here we have a moss back trophy tree. You'll see you still have the arms and it may look complex to some, but the biggest thing to notice here is there's a lot of big spaces here. Uh, your arms are spaced out. A lot of times we're gonna use this um, off by itself. We're gonna use this much more as a fish attractor uh, than something that's complex and gonna protect your small bluegill and small forage fish like we were talking about before. Over here we have um, this, is more of a DIY structure that you can build. It's just three pallets, you know, attached together as a triangle. Again, you have the spaces here, big space in between. Both of these examples are we're gonna use more as a fish attractor. You're gonna protect some fish, but that's not really what you're accomplishing. You're not changing the trajectory of your fishery by using these, especially when they're spaced out. So before we dive into the really complex stuff, I'm gonna show you a quick example of how to improve a simple structure and increase the complexity. So here we have the pallet structure that we already talked about. Uh, and here we have another DIY type of structure, just kind of imitating a brush pile. You know, there's some quick creek here and some tubing pretty common you'll find uh, different pond owners trying this kind of thing. So something you could really easily do if you have this and you got this, the way to improve this if you're trying to add complex habitat, just pick that up and slide it right in there and fasten it in there and now you have a much more complex piece of habitat. So now we'll move over into the, the even more complex stuff. We're gonna get back into the Mossback habitat products that we use a lot. This one here is called the Root Wad Kit. This is probably what we sell the most of after our fish surveys when we're really trying to address complex habitat in a client's pond. So you can really see the difference in the trophy tree we talked about before in this product and this next one. You have a lot more limbs, they're crisscrossing, uh, there's just a lot of little spaces. So you can imagine when your bluegill are hatching off the spawning beds and they move into something like this, they can really be protected well from all of your predators. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with this complex habitat. Over here, we have just a little bit different version. <clears throat> These individual ones here by themselves with all of the arms in them are called the Safe Haven. We've added two of the Safe Haven products and one of the root wads down here, just a little bit taller version for deeper water. And so these are really good complex habitat options, 
But there's one more little aspect that I want you guys to think about when you're doing this kind of thing, and that's gonna be clustering these products. Whether it's DIY, whether it's these moss backs, natural brush piles, if you're really trying to increase your complexity, you want to cluster these things. And so just real quick, we're gonna add this trophy tree and you wanna get it in there the best you can. You just want it to be close. You wanna create more edge habitat and more complexity. We're gonna add another one of these over here. And then we even have another one right up here, another root wad, and we're gonna add in here. And so now you can see you're covering a much bigger area and you have a lot of little spaces a lot of edge habitat for your small forage fish to get in and out of, and you're gonna have more and more bluegill survive to those larger sizes. So if you've stuck around this long, we wanted to just give you a couple extra bonus tips here to think about when you're doing any kind of habitat installation into your pond. So here we have kind of, you know, some form of a brush pile. This is Pretty complex, but if I were going to put it into a pond again, I would want to cluster this uh, together. But something to think about with a natural brush pile like this is two things, okay? For one, something natural made out of wood like this is gonna break down over time. So something like this, these small arms are giving you a lot of complexity right now. But once it's in the water, two, maybe three years at best, this stuff's gonna start to decay and you're gonna be left with the bigger branches at the bottom and it's gonna start to become more of a simple habitat. And so you need to keep that in mind, whether you're replacing it or however you're gonna manage that, but that's something to keep in mind. Tip number two, when you're fishing around this kind of stuff, you know, you can see where you can get snagged up, get hung, your lures are gonna get stuck in there. So there's ways, if you're thinking about doing DIY stuff or buying artificial habitat, there's things you can look at. Um, so here on this one, these are round. Your lures are not gonna get stuck in there as well. Over here, back to kind of our, our big cluster. Let's take a close look at what these arms are doing here. So all these arms are small Vs, so they're angled up. You can imagine your crankbaits, your jigs, everything are gonna roll right over this, okay? So whether you're making your own structure or you're buying a product like the Mossbacks that we use a lot of, you can keep that in mind too. You're gonna be able to cast through this and get through it much more easily than you are going to a natural brush pile or something like the pallet that we've talked about and then the other thing, like we've talked about, the natural brush piles are gonna degrade where something like this, once you have it in place, it's gonna be there forever. You're gonna be able to go out there, target it while you're fishing, and it's gonna be protecting your forage and doing that for as long as you have your pond. During all the surveys that we do every year, assessing people's habitat in their pond, we find that complex habitat is by far and away most underused habitat type for all of our customers. And so we're going to recommend that you install four to five areas of complex habitat per surface acre. We want each area to have a cluster of habitat that's gonna cover roughly a 10 by 10 foot area. It doesn't have to be perfect and you don't have to get out the tape measure. But the point is to remember to cluster your habitat to create more edge and to add to your complexity. As we've talked about, simple habitat is not quite as important, but it still helps to have some of those areas out there. So we're gonna recommend to install up to three to four areas of simple habitat per surface acre. Again, this is less of a requirement, but can create good areas for your anglers to go out there and target. And we like to put these areas kind of on the deeper edge or adjacent to your complex habitat so you can draw in those larger adult fish and your anglers can catch them on that outside edge. Ultimately, both types of habitat have their place in your pond. Just make sure when you are buying or building habitat that you keep in mind what you are truly accomplishing with it. If you would like help assessing your lake or purchasing habitat, please feel free to reach out to us through our website or give us a call.